Lying down was not an option, nor could we all sit down. We decided to take turns sitting. There was little air. The lucky ones found themselves near a window. They could watch the blooming countryside flit by. After two days of travel, thirst became intolerable, as did the heat. Freed of normal constraints, some of the young let go of their inhibitions and, under cover of darkness, caressed one another without any thoughts of others, alone in the world. The others pretended not to notice. There was still some food left, but we never ate enough to satisfy our hunger. Our principle was to economize, to save for tomorrow. Tomorrow could be worse yet. The train stopped at Kashkau, a small town on the Czechoslovakian border. We realized then that we were not staying in Hungary. Our eyes opened too late. The door of the car slid aside. A German officer stepped in, accompanied by a Hungarian lieutenant acting as his interpreter. From this moment on, you are under the authority of the German army. Anyone who still owns gold, silver, or watches must hand them over now. Anyone who will be found to have kept any will be shot on the spot. Secondly, anyone who is ill should report to the hospital car. That's all. The Hungarian lieutenant went around with a basket and retrieved the last possessions of those who chose not to go on tasting the bitterness of fear. There are 80 of you in the car, the German officer added. If anyone goes missing, you will all be shot like dogs. The two disappeared. The doors clanked shut. We had fallen into a trap, up to our necks. The doors were nailed. The way back irrevocably cut off. The world had become a hermetically sealed cattle car. There was a woman among us, a certain Mrs. Schachter. She was in her fifties, and her ten-year-old son was with her, crouched in a corner. Her husband and two older sons had been deported with the first transport by mistake. The separation had totally shattered her. I knew her well, a quiet, tense woman with piercing eyes. She had been a frequent guest at our house. Her husband was a pious man who spent most of his days and nights in the house of study. It was she who supported the family. Mrs. Schachter had lost her mind. On the first day of the journey, she had already begun to moan. She kept asking why she had been separated from her family. Later, her sobs and screams became hysterical. On the third night, as we were sleeping, some of us sitting, huddled against each other, some of us standing, a piercing cry broke the silence. Fire! I see a fire! I see a fire! There was a moment of panic. Who had screamed? It was Mrs. Schachter, standing in the middle of the car, in the faint light filtering through the windows. She looked like a withered tree in a field of wheat. She was howling, pointing through the window. Look, look at this fire, this terrible fire. Have mercy on me. Some pressed against the bars to see. There was nothing, only the darkness of night. It took us a long time to recover from this harsh awakening. We were still trembling and with every screech of the wheels, we felt the abyss opening beneath us. Unable to still our anguish, we tried to reassure each other. She is mad. Poor woman. Someone had placed a damp rag on her forehead, but she nevertheless continued to scream. Fire! I see a fire! Her little boy was crying, clinging to her skirt, trying to hold her hand. It's nothing, mother. There's nothing there. Please sit down. He pained me even more than did his mother's cries. Some of the women tried to calm her. You'll see. You'll find your husband and sons again in a few days. She continued to scream and sob fitfully. Jews, listen to me. 
she cried. I see a fire. I see flames. Huge flames. It was as though she were possessed by some evil spirit. We tried to reason with her, more to calm ourselves, to catch our breath, than to soothe her. She is hallucinating because she is thirsty. Poor woman. That's why she speaks of flames devouring her. But it was all in vain. Our terror could no longer be contained. Our nerves had reached a breaking point. Our very skin was aching. It was as though madness had infected all of us. We gave up. A few young men forced her to sit down, then bound and gagged her. <laughs>